Now, the emotional turmoil that military wives go through when their partners go off to battle, very hard to imagine if you haven't gone through it yourself. Well, my next guest has decided to use her experiences as the wife of a serviceman to write a book that she hopes will give some comfort to others in the same situation. Amanda Prowse joins me now. Amanda, it's great to see you. Really, really good to see you. And you've obviously, you know, you met and married a soldier. I did. Um, and actually got married and the next day was deployed to Iraq. Yeah, it was really, really strange, actually. Look at you two. <laughs> I know, Bless. but you knew that when you married him, you knew that that, that was the way it was. Well, you kind of know what you're taking on because obviously you're marrying a soldier yeah. um, and you kind of think you can envisage what it would be like to be apart for periods of time. But I don't think you can fully understand it until you're in it. So it no, exactly, because it's the worry. It's that. You said yeah. something that, that really, really made it come home to me, which was when he's away, you find it hard to breathe. Mm. You just, it's always, it's that kind of thing of, you're kind of tense yeah, all the time. it is. And you, it's almost subconscious, actually, but you sort of feel like you're holding your breath, just waiting for them to come home safe. Yeah. And then as soon as they do, it's like, phew, exactly. absolutely phew. And it's that dreading the knock on the door, dreading the phone call in the middle of the night, all of that. It's mm. just, and, and when you hear of it, you know, and you, when you hear sadly that a, another soldier has fallen, it, it just brings it all back, doesn't it? Oh, it's horrendous because there is a period, might only be for a couple of minutes, might be for a couple of hours or might be a day where you don't know who's been hurt. And there's often Gosh. a communication blackout. Mm. So you're just waiting for it to come on the news. And, and it's a difficult one because obviously you hear it's someone else and you feel their pain, but also you feel quite a lot of relief that it's it's not your turn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mixed emotion. Yeah, but you see. decided all of those emotions, you decided to put in to a book, because I know you've always wanted to be a writer. It's something that you've always wanted to do, and your husband fully, fully supports that, of course. But you've put it all into this this book, this mm. story. I have. I've written a story called Poppy Day, and essentially it tells a story of what it's like to be the one at home, ticking off the days, waiting for your loved one to come back. Um, and very early on in the book, you discover that uh, Martin, Poppy's husband, has been taken hostage on his first tour of Afghanistan. And it's what she does to try and bring him home. She's a feisty girl that just yeah. doesn't sit back and let things happen. It is. It's, when I was reading it, I thought this would make a brilliant movie. Everyone a, says or that. Or a TV drama, because yeah. it is very cinematic. You know, the, the images are very vivid. Mm, and it's you. come straight from the heart, because you've lived it, you know, yeah. so you know the emotions and all of that. Mm. And it would work incredibly well. Yeah, like everyone says that, right? It's funny. Mm. But also what's really good is money's going to the British Legion. Which yeah, is, absolutely. Which is fantastic. So every copy that, that is sold, you know, the money is actually going to go and, and help the British Legion, who do an amazing job, they don't do. they? Yeah, they do absolutely. And I job. think, you know, the reason Simeon comes home unharmed is just luck. And the reason so many don't is just the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's my way of saying thank you and helping people that need it. It's, it's tough, though, when he's out there. It, 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 it must be very tough for you and for the kids, too. How do, mm -hmm. how do you sort of answer their questions? Because I always imagine that would, that's quite difficult. It's OK when they're babies and they don't absolutely. know, but when they're a bit older. Well, actually, they kind of get used to it because you, your life is normal, isn't it? It's kind of how you live is how you yeah. are, and so they don't know of any course. different. But also, I always think they take their lead from me. So I kind of imagine if it's like being a pilot on a plane, if you're about to hit turbulence and the pilot says, mm. we're going to go through this turbulence, but we're going to land safely and it'll be fine, you kind of think, oh, well, that's OK, I'm in safe hands. If the pilot goes, oh, my God, we're you know, yeah. you create panic. <laughs> of course, So yes. I think, you know, I have to do that for my kids. I have to be the pilot. I have to keep calm and say, mm. it's fine, you know, Dad's mm. safe, which he, you know, he usually is. Yeah. And it gives them confidence. But don't forget, for them, it's normal, even of though course. it's difficult. No, I understand you know, that. So, I can understand yeah. that. That's it's an odd it's life, like... actually. It's an odd life. Do you yeah. find you get a lot of help from other ways in the same situation? Definitely, you? yeah, we do. It's very supportive because obviously it's not only army, there's navy, there's RAF, all forces are out mm. there in Afghanistan and all over the place. Um, and we live in a military community, so all my neighbours, everyone around me, all my mm. friends know what it's like to, to go through what I'm going through. That must be good because sometimes you don't have to see it. Yeah. You just know. You sometimes know. people will just turn up and say, you know, I'll take the kids to school or, right. you know, my parents are amazing. And people just tend to know. I mean, my best friend, she's on the phone three in the morning, eight in the morning when I mm. need that chat. She was last night and it's great. Oh, that's brilliant. Just when sometimes you just need that. Yeah, that's a true pal. It is a true pal. That is a Very true lucky. friend. And you, and, you, and you really do need that, don't you? You do. So this book, is, it's been received so, so well. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Doing, it's doing incredibly well. You must be absolutely thrilled. I'm absolutely you know, thrilled, yeah. not, not just because of the fact that, you know, people are recognising that you can write, but mm. also the fact that what the story's about. Yeah. Um, more books books in the pipeline? More books Definitely done. more books in the pipeline. Uh, yeah, Peter, my agent, is currently talking to some big publishers and we're talking oh. about my next books and how it's going to go forward. So, very exciting times oh, for me. Um, um, you know, unbelievable for me. Just I'm a normal, you know, wife and mum and suddenly this is happening to me. It's quite unbelievable. I'm very no, it's, lucky. But, and very but it's great, but you can write. I mean, that's the thing. You can. Thank you. You know, the, the story is excellent it's, and it Thank is a real you. page turner and you do Aww. want to find out what happens to him and what Thanks, happens to him Mary. at the end. Thank you. Um, and like I, I said, tell you. no, no, don't tell anybody, <laughs> don't tell anybody. But, but they have to to read it for themselves oh. but like I say it's 
It's written from the heart, and that's that's a success to to a book. If you if you believe it, one hundred and ten percent. Thank then, you. Then of course, we wish you all the very best with it. Thank we you really so do. Much. Thank, thank you. you for coming in, thank and hope it raises loads and loads of money for a brilliant cause. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. Right after the break, as we continue our search for Britain's most natural beauty.